Hello, this is Teacher Jamie from the Morning Program. We're going to go over the parent participation guidelines and how to interact with the children on your workday. Before you participate, all participators must have a signed parent health statement, a TB test or TB risk assessment, and proof of vaccines for measles, pertussis, flu shot, or waiver, and a COVID-19 vaccine on file. What to do on your participation day? Please arrive on time at 8.30 for the morning program and 1 p.m. for the afternoon program. Next, please sign in. Sign in your child. Make sure that they have their bags and their cubbies and are all set. And then you'll sign yourself in at your program's board. There will be a schedule and a sign-in sheet on the board along with the job cards. Please sign in and be honest about the time that you signed in, that you arrived, and grab the job card with that corresponds to the uh, area that you'll be working in on that day. The job card has all the information you need to work at your area and all any type of emergency information you will need in case we have an emergency. Please dress appropriately. ECPC, we, the same goes for the children. You're gonna be, there's a chance that you're gonna get messy at ECPC or wet, so please don't wear any nice clothes that you don't wanna get ruined. Next, please just turn off your cell phone. You can have it near you. If you're expecting a call, you can work with the teachers and let them know that you're expecting a call and we can sit in uh, for you while you're doing that call. But for the most, we don't want anyone on their phones while they're in the program. You should be paying attention to the children and um, helping them out and not on your phone. Also, please stay in your area. Do not leave your area even for a moment without getting appropriate coverage for a teacher. There needs to be an adult in every area at all times. So if you need to leave for the bathroom, you have a phone call or your child needs you away from your area, please find a teacher to sit in for you in your area. If you need to use the restroom or grab a snack, please do so and come right back to your area to enjoy your snack. When we're in high community level, keep your mask on at all times, but you may lower it briefly to have a sip or bite as long as you can remain six feet distance from children. Report all injuries to teachers. Teachers will be able to administer any first aid if necessary, and you'll also need to fill out the injury report that's located on one of the clipboards outside by the sign-in area. There will be post-shift meetings. Teachers like to have a little powwow at the end to check in to see how everything went. We'll be able to answer any questions from the group or any comments, and we'll let you kind of know how to schedule the rest of the week and next time when you come in, what things might be happening. Also, then after that, follow all departure guidelines. You'll be collecting your child, signing them out, and going out the back gate. While you're participating, the adult's role is to support the children's exploration. So we keep adults' comments about the children's work limited. We're also there to facilitate their play so we get more materials, keep the area safe and tidy, and encourage discovery and offer limited assistance. When you participate, keep your focus on watching the children. Games may start to become edgy and you may need to step in closer, uh, check in what their plan is. If the play is getting a little bit rougher, voices are starting to get a little bit louder. You want to see what their intentions. They might just be playing, but it's good to find out. We'll talk more about how to speak with children and find out what they're, what's happening in their games very soon. When you participate, you might find that your child is a little more clingy and may need your attention. They may also be testing boundaries. It's helpful to prepare your child for your participation day. Here are some tips to help you prepare your child for your participation day. It's good to explain ahead of time that you'll be working that day and your job is to help all the children in the area. They may need to be reminded that you're working in there and you can show them your job card when you're actually in your area to show that you're working. Be consistent with morning routines. Try to do the same thing you do every morning even when you're just dropping off. It's good for them even though you're doing it a little bit earlier. Be patient with your child and with yourself. It's, it's, a, it's a big transition for the children to have their parents uh, at school. And so they might be even acting a little bit different at home since they're preparing for you to be there. But be patient. You know, if you're going to be late, be sure to let us know. And that uh, we'll have someone cover your space if you're having a hard time getting out of the house. Remember, your child comes first. If he or she needs you, ask a teacher to help or for the coverage of your area so you can briefly assist your child. We are very open for you to be able to, if your child wants to see you, we will cover your space and you can go see them and then maybe bring them back or let them know that you're still working so you can detach from them and come back. You may find more information about all of these things about parent participation on pages 11 and 12 of the ECPC Parent Handbook. 
Hi, this is Sarah, the current board president, and teacher Wendy and I are going to talk about on-call and the sublist. Substitutes are other co-op parents who fill in for you when you can't make it to a participation day and know in advance. Families who are able can sign up on the sublist to be contacted regularly to sub for your program. If you have spare time, it's a good way to build a community. The parent hiring the sub pays the sub that year's sub fee, which you can find listed on the member website. Call subs as soon as possible if you're going to be out. On call is a system put into place to ensure that if there is an emergency or sudden illness with a participator, that there will always be coverage. If we're down a participator and have no one to fill in, we may have to close the program for the day. Each family must sign up for one on-call day per month. The on-call calendar is always on the member website. We send this out at the beginning of the month for the following month. Sign up in advance to get a spot that works with your schedule. If you don't sign up, you'll be assigned a day. On your on-call day, you'll need to be available for up to 45 minutes after the start of each program, 9.15 for a.m. and 1.45 for p.m. If you miss your on-call shift, you will be fined based on this year's fines and fees, which you can find on the member website and in the parent handbook. You can also hire an on-call calendar sub. This is someone who will sign up for an extra on-call shift in your place, and you will pay them this year's calendar sub fee, which is listed on the member website and in the parent handbook. Please be aware of your on-call shift every month. The difference between subs and on-call. If you know in advance you will not be able to participate one of your shifts, reach out for subs as soon as you can. You can first use the sub list, and if you're unable to find someone, send an email out to the school listserv asking for a sub or a trade. If you tried all options and you're still unable to find a sub, contact the on-call coordinator, on-call at ecpckids.com, or the admin, admin at ecpckids.com, and they can try to help you arrange something. We use on-call only as a last resort. If you do not know in advance, say you wake up sick, your child wakes up sick, you have a flat tire, this is what we have the on-call system for. Even so, first try to call a sub from the sub list. If there are no subs available, call the on-call sub directly. If you hire an on-call sub, you will be responsible for paying them this year's on-call sub fee for their shift. You can find these rates on the member website and in the parent handbook. Please note the on-call sub fee is higher than the regular sub fee. Be sure to inform the teachers of any participation changes, trades, subs, or on-call. One of the most important things to do while you're participating is to know how to talk to children the ECPC way. Our goal at ECPC is to support a wide variety of children with different developmental and learning styles. Our participants are expected to follow ECPC rules for managing conflict with the children. If you're unsure of how to manage the situation or conflict, please ask the teacher. There are four rules that form the foundation of interaction with children at ECPC. These are questions in in which we we asked ourselves and asked the children if an activity that they're doing is first, keep yourself safe. If what you're doing might harm the child, maybe they shouldn't be doing it, and you can talk to them about that. The next thing is to keep others safe. Is the activity that the child uh, doing, is it not safe for other children, either by physically keeping them safe, or doing something that the other child does not like. Number three is to keep the materials safe. We don't want the children damaging much of the toys or any of the materials that we have by throwing them, stomping on them, kicking them. So if an act, if the children are performing an activity like that, we want to you know intervene that way. And then the fourth rule is uh, we cannot play a game with or against someone who does not want to play that game. We expect children to stretch their boundaries and try some risky behaviors, explore power, and experiment with social situations. When you're unsure if something is safe as a participator, you can ask, what is your plan? This challenges children to rethink what they are doing and to explain their idea in more detail. Try to stay close by. When you're in close proximity, children often change their behaviors. They notice that you're nearby and that you are monitoring them. Also, allow children to try things, but with the caveat. You may say, I will watch while you're trying it to see if it's safe. For conflict resolution, uh, this tends to be a touchy subject for parents. We're all learning how to uh, help our children in times when they're having conflict with other children. And here are some things you can do to help with that. If the conflict is physical, please try to stop it immediately and separate the children involved. Next, try to get on the children's level. By doing this, you're going to be able to uh, better connect with their eyes and make them feel a little more comfortable with you Instead of standing over them and talking down to them, it's, it's, it's helpful to be on their level. One phrase that you can use when you're talking with them about it is to 
to ask them to tell me what was happening. Even though you might have saw something happen, you might not have seen everything. So it's a good practice to have the children start telling you what happened. If you saw something happen, state it so they know that you saw, you might have seen Billy hit Leon. And so you want to let them know that you saw that and then maybe more will come out that that, is, that wasn't the first thing that happened in this conflict. Be sure to be empathetic but firm. It's like, I know you want the toy, but she is using it right now. And you may, uh, and, and then you may ask, can I have a turn with it? So this is a very important uh, thing that we, because kids are always looking to have something another child has. They want to play with that now. Just because one child wants it doesn't mean they need to get it. What they need to do is try to use their, uh, have words to uh, say like, uh, I would like that. I would like to turn that when you're done. And so we can um, give them some cues and let the children talk to each other to say that again, that, that they want to turn with it when, uh, with that toy or with that swing or with that bike when they're done, instead of getting it right now. And they might, some children might have to wait until um, the other child is done playing with it. We're not going to stop one child's play to make another child um, play with something that they want. And then also give each other, give each child a chance to tell what they were thinking and what they were feeling. It's good to get a full perspective on what was happening from both children to better understand and allow the children to be empathetic to each other's feelings. Here are some other strategies when dealing with uh, conflict resolution. You can ignore non-destructive behaviors. Don't feed behavior with negative attention. If what the children are doing is aren't breaking any of our four rules, you can usually let it go, but just stay close, do the stay close and and check in and let the kids know that you're watching and you're gonna see if, it, if, if their play goes to someplace that might be safe. But a lot of the times you can, sometimes the kids, children are just looking for attention and you can ignore stuff that's non-destructive, it's not hurting anyone else. Try to redirect. Sometimes when they're might be uh, throwing balls at people or trying to destroy something, we might have something that uh, something else that they can do. We might have a ball that they can hit or something they can kick like a box or something that will be able to give them the same sense of what they were looking for when they were either, you know, kicking something we didn't want them to do or pushing each other. We can find a safe space than the, the specific activity that they were doing. We can find more materials. A lot of times um, children are, a conflict arises because they think there's only one of one thing and they're going to and they want that one thing where we have at ECPC, we tend to have a lot of all the one things that the children want. And so we can always try to get more of that thing so that everyone has a chance. And, and a good example here is, look, here are more buckets. Let's get you another one. And we have tons of buckets, tons of shovels, cars, so much of, uh, of all the materials that we should be able to have enough for all the kids to be able to have some. Use statements and not questions. It is time to go um, inside now. Don't give the chance for the children to say no. By asking a question, they're like, no, I don't want to. But if you just tell them, it's like, no, it's time for us to go inside. They're more likely to not find a way to um, just tell you I'm not doing it. So uh, use statements and stay away from questions and then keep it simple. Five words or less in a crisis. If you start talking too much to the children, they're just going to go blank. They're going to walk away and they're not going to be interested in what you're saying. So try to keep it uh, in few as few words as possible. There's also on page 16 and 17 of the parent handbook, there are uh, a deeper dive and some more techniques to deal with conflict resolution the ECPC way. At ECPC, we have a shared language that helps teacher, children, and parents better understand each other. We call them ECP citizens. The first one on our list, and one of the, the ones you'll hear the most, is called stop it, I don't like it. This, these are words that the children can use to tell any, anyone but another child that if, if something they're doing is not working for them. If a child is trying to include them in a game they're not playing, trying to um, mess with things that they're building with, anything a child doesn't like that another child's doing, they can say, stop it, I don't like it. I like for the children to add on at times, like, you know, I'll encourage them to say, well, tell them what you don't like so they know how to stop it. And usually the children will then tell the other child, like, I don't like that you're messing with my blocks. So um, an adult can help the children when they say, as they, and, and tell the other child, and say, hey, I heard... I heard Betty say to stop it, and so you should. Next one, um, a great one to do is what is your plan? A lot of time when you're starting to see children that might be starting to work together into some risky behavior or might be doing something that may, taking toys out of spaces, you know, doing some play that might be more risky, instead of stopping them what they're doing, you can just ask them the simple question of what is your plan? And they'll usually just tell you what they're going to do and you'll find out whether you can kind of use some of the uh, redirection or 
maybe help them adjust their plan to something that might be a little bit safer uh, for them, other people, and the materials. How can I help you and what do you need? Our parent participators are there to help facilitate the children's play. And so how can I help you and what do you need? Gives the children power and the allowance to know that they can pick, you know, the things that, that they might need for a certain play and then you might be able to help. If you don't know, you know, how to um, get the things that they need, always check with the teacher and we usually have so many materials that we can help them somehow. The next one, number four, is check in with him to see if he is okay. This is something we do with uh, conflict. If there's physical conflict, if another child is upset about another, something that another child did, we try to ask them instead of saying sorry, we try to have them say, hey, can you go uh, check in with them and see if they're okay, if they need a boo-boo bag, if they want some alone time, that kind of stuff. We try to get the children to check in with the people who are upset. If another child is feeling upset because another one's upset, we try to get them to check in and see too because they're feeling a lot of empathy for the other child. And so checking in is a great way to have everyone kind of be more empathetic with each other. The next one, we ask her, can I have it when you're done? We talked about this before, but just because another child wants something another one has doesn't mean they, they can get it. We try to get the kids to, to ask for something when they're done. So can I have it when you're done? Or can I, um, how long, how many more minutes do you need? So these are ways of the children to negotiate time and let each other know that they would like to play with what they're doing or they would like to swing on that swing. And, and so they can let each other know when I'm done, can you, can I have a turn? That's essentially what can I have it when you're done and how many more minutes do you need? It gives them a framework of how they're able to, to get what they want. While you're participating, these are a few things that we try to avoid. We try to avoid telling a child, good job. We avoid empty praise. If you need to uh, respond, we try to be more specific. Good job doesn't tell the children anything about what they did. They might come up with a picture and you say, oh, good job on the picture. You want to uh, become a little bit deeper with us. Like, I see you use a lot of purple. I see you squiggle lines. Um, ask the child back, like, do you like it? Good job is so ingrained in what we say, but it really, if you think about it, it doesn't really mean anything. So try to be a little bit more specific by giving praise to children and being more observational about your phrasing when giving praise. Uh, don't be the center of the game. At ECPC, we're trying to get the kids to play with each other and not to play with other adults. Keep the focus on the kids. Try to set limits with the children. Some, some parents love to have the kids, you know, climbing on them. And the kids, if once they see one, they're going to all come up and do it. And all of a sudden the parent who started this game doesn't want to play the game anymore. And so we're trying to just be on the outskirts to support their play, but not to be in the middle of their play. So avoid blaming and labeling children. The behavior is not the child. We don't want to be modeling that we're blaming certain children as, you know, being bad or you did this. The children, every, all the children are seeing this. And this is kind of when our behavior is being, is being modeled. And if we are starting to react certain ways to certain children, uh, the, the, the other um, students at the school might see us doing that. And then it'll be that they're starting to label the children as well. So we don't, we don't want to make an action that a child has be who they are and the behavior is just uh, not the child, the child. And then finally, when you're working in your area, we um, at ECPC, we don't force the child to clean up. We can encourage cleanup and model it cleanup. But what we, our philosophy behind that is that we don't want to interrupt the children's play while it's happening. Um, they have a large time in, uh, in their schedule for open play. And if we stop them, in the middle of their play to clean up something, they either may stop playing that game or avoid playing that game in the future, knowing that we're gonna ask them to clean it up before they can move on. There is a time for cleanup in the program that is towards the end before our transition into groups. And we encourage the children to help us with that. And, and many of them like to do it. When we start bringing out wagons and we start putting stuff away, they wanna help as well. Um, but if we, if we stop them in the middle of what they're doing, uh, it might prevent future play. So we always want to encourage play, not stop it, and wait for the appropriate time for them to help us with cleanup. And next we're going to be talking about how to respond to children's works. This work can be anything from a painting that they made, a volcano hill that they made in the sand, a block sculpture, Legos, anything that children create on their own. They're, they bring it to other ones to respond to. So um, you can also be using this when you're at the art table, a, a lot of this at the art table um, inside or um, the block area or even the sand area. 
So be flexible and open-minded about different ideas. Um, we're trying not to put any ideas of how the children should be interacting with the materials. Uh, we don't want to model, we don't want to do anything, and we want to be open-minded to what they're doing. Keep that child in mind, uh, what they're doing, what they're working is specific for them. It might not be what another child wants to do. One child might be more developmentally able to build this amazing structure in the block room where another one wants to but can't. And so you have to understand that one child might be frustrated because they can't do that. And you have to find a way to get the child to start building on their own, to start building those skills that the other child might already be up to because they're either older or just more experienced with the materials. But understand that every child is going to be different in how they approach uh, materials. Uh, avoid making models. Don't show the children how to do something because they probably can't do it the way that you can. They're going to want to see if you draw a sun, they're going to want to draw the sun exactly how yours is. And if they don't, if they can't do it, they'll get frustrated and they'll just want you to make it for them. So we don't want to make models. We want to, uh, we want to give the children the chance to interact with all the materials on their own to make what they want to do, not to copy what we're doing. Avoid praise. We've talked about this previously with good job. We want to describe and ask questions about what they've done. So describe, you're seeing like, oh, wow, that tower looks so tall. It looks like you worked really hard on it. And by, and by just giving them observations, children will tend to start talking about these things that you're talking about. They're like, and they'll say, like, yeah, I use these blocks here and this, and they'll really start diving deep into what their thought process was by when they're using the materials. So by describing and then ask questions, not like, is that blue? You don't want to quiz them. You want to you want to say, well, did you, did you like it? Like, you know, did you enjoy painting? Did, what do you like about your painting? And they'll, they'll, they'll just start talking about their creation that way, but you never want to quiz them because they know what the color blue is because they used it. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. Use gentle guidance and don't panic. If a child is having a hard time with, with a certain material, don't worry. We are, we are there to help guide. It's almost called scaff scaffolding where we're kind of giving them a base to allow them to explore more. And maybe you can help them if they're stuck in something, you can kind of help give them, you know, if they're having a hard time beating something, you can maybe they're, they're holding a needle wrong or they're holding the wire wrong before, you know, they're not have, getting into the hole the way they want to. Or if they're, you know, having a hard time riding bikes, you know, sometimes that's as a whole creative thing that you can kind of, you know, help them go like, okay, your foot goes here, your foot goes here, and then let them go on their own and try to keep figuring it out. So. Gentle guidance is highly encouraged. We just don't want to, we want to let them to uh, explore their space, their materials and their abilities. Encourage productive use of the materials. Um, this kind of goes back with one of our rules of like, is it safe for our materials? So productive use of materials, like are they using the materials safely? You know, are they breaking crayons for no reason? Well, if that's the case, maybe we're not using the crank. We, we're not going to break the crayons that we have here, but maybe we have a bunch of crayons in the back that are already broken and the children might want to do something with them if we can redirect um, if they're not using materials correctly. Although we want them to explore different techniques, we're not going to tell them how to use the materials, but if they're starting to destroy stuff or starting pouring stuff out, we want to deter them from making it so that the uh, materials aren't being misused. Uh, respect the name. This is a big one. The children want to see their names on their work. Um, so it's kind of harder when we are in the block area, when we're in the sand area, to put their name on something. But what you can do is tell them that I'll take a picture of it and, and, and send it to the teacher. And then maybe the teacher can send it to their parent, however which way the child wants to share that. So if it's something we can't put a name on, we can take a picture of it for them. And it usually kind of helps them saying, okay, they, I, I know that that's mine. Um, otherwise, you know, when we're doing art, you know, saying, uh, not just writing their name on it. Sometimes the kids want to try to write their name. So we give them a chance to write their name, find out where they want their name written on the paper. It's very important to them to have still control over, you know, where their name goes on their piece of art. And then a large, a lot, give them a large amount of time. Mostly everything's open and the kids will be able to play with all the materials, but specifically at art, we will have a certain time that it's it's open. It tends to be a little bit, we have to clean up. So it tends to be a little bit less than maybe the outside time, but if they still will, might get like a good hour and a half, two hours to work on a particular project and work with the materials. And a child can sit, might find their one material they want to work with and sit and just use that material on a piece of paper and might want to keep on making more and more um, uh, of those paintings and let them go. They're feeling it. We want to continue with, we want to support that, ask them if they need anything else. 
Uh, and so give them a lot of time. Don't, don't pressure them to, to be done with something um, when they're not ready. Unless we're, we're ready for cleanup and then we can save with we can save it or let them give them a five minute warning that we're almost time and they might have to finish up. But if it's during the regular time, just let them kind of keep creating. Congratulations. You've completed the section on parent participation and how to talk to kids the ECPC way. Please refer to the handbook for even more details and feel free to ask us any questions.